okay, we're going to do a quick review on Love and Hip Hop Season 6, Episode 3. If you caught my review last night, it was called Rough, Rugged, and Raw. Um, a lot of curse words was used. I mean, I just got really rough with it. I mean, it was so rough that I was like, you know what? I'll just go ahead and pass on this. So I'm just going to come back, retract, and give you a quick review on how I feel that this season went. Um, to be honest with you, it seems like every episode that comes on, it, it appears that the episodes, I don't know, for some reason, it's just not appealing to me anymore. Um, let's start off with Peter Guns and Amina and this whole Tara triangle shit. I mean, this shit is becoming really tiring now. It almost appears as if this is like made up almost for the TV, as if they're acting. You know what reality TV reminds me of? Reality TV, it reminds me of people who always wanted to be like that famous actor and actress, but their acting was so bad that they was told, you know, I'm sorry, we can't, we can't put you in this movie. And it's funny because if you think about it, a lot of the reality stars who have been on TV, I'm sorry, I have to mention her name, but K. Michelle and a few others, you find out later on that they're actually, they actually are interested in being in movies. You know, they're actually interested in being on some type of show. So again, this kind of reminds me of people who are just like horrible actors and horrible actresses. And they're so desperate to be seen, so desperate to be on TV that they're willing to sell their fucking life story, which is pathetic. Do you know what I mean? Just to be seen. Let me just quickly give a review. I'm not going to talk too long. I actually did an hour long show yesterday, but I'll try to keep this minimized, go over every detail. This Amina, Tara, and um, Peter situation is totally pathetic. I mean, I'm almost certain that Tara is not living in the same building as they are. I mean, as you see in the background, the, the apartment looked empty. Damn near had a blow-up mattress on the floor. I mean, I, I believe they're just renting out the apartment. Even if you look in the kitchen on the counter, they had no dishes. I mean, the stove looked brand new. I mean, everything was just, it was such an act. I mean, usually if people have a refrigerator, usually you see something on the refrigerator. I mean, there was no cups, no pots, no nothing. Everything was just so fucking staged. And when Amina came in the apartment, I mean, the whole shit was just a fucking act. And our, our, is society really naive enough to believe that you know, the cameraman just happened to be hanging out, you know, in the kitchen when Amina knocked on the door. Are we that naive to believe that the cameraman just happened to show up? You know what I'm saying? When these people were outside. I mean, come on, think about this. This is fucking, think, I mean, think logically about this. You know, these scenes are made up and the shit is fucking trashy already. All right, so that's that's my review on the Amina and, and situation. Please, those those women are fucking tired already. Um, the next person I want to talk about is DJ Self and his little triangle that he's trying to form with his girlfriend Yami, who's some damn stripper. So it, it appears that this man likes strippers and he likes hoes because Yami, she's a stripper, Cardi B is a stripper, they're both claiming to be hoes. So this is the kind of life that he likes, and this is what's being glamorized. And then Peter with this girl, um, Mariah Lynn. And Mariah Lynn is talking about how she was with Peter, but she doesn't kiss and tell. I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. First, you said you don't kiss and tell, but you're telling the whole entire world that you could be with Peter at any time. No, not Peter. Excuse me. She probably was with him, too. But she could be with Rich Dollars at any time. And she has been. And when they get together, he can have whatever he wants. Uh, but then you see a preview with uh, Mariah Lynn and the other guy, which I can't even remember his name, Cisco. Or I, I can't even remember his name right now, the Spanish guy. She was with him, kissing him. You know, it seems like everybody's just exchanging partners in this group. And it, it, this shit is really pathetic. I mean, and then you have, you know, 
Cardi B, which I know she's like some fucking comedian and, and everybody loves her, this, that, and a third. But, you know, according to the blogs, a lot of people really don't really like her. They think that she's annoying. Okay. Somebody even said that she looked like my little pony with the braids. Um, people are saying they don't understand why this woman is getting promoted especially when you're talking about being a stripper and being a hoe in 2015. Are you serious? Did we not forget that diseases are alive and well, some of them which are incurable, and they're just promoting sex, 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 sex. I mean, this person with that person. I mean, this person's with this person for five minutes, and then there was somebody else. Okay, as far as your boy Rich Dollars, I mean, every time you turn around, he's with all these different women, none of them even have similarities. He doesn't care what color, what size, what he doesn't care about anything. As long as you can spread it wide and he can lay it down low, he's good. You know what I'm saying? It makes me always wonder, like, what is he doing? Like, what is this really about? And it's so fucking made up. It's so fake. Just like when they had the Love and Hip Hop um, LA, he was so-called dating Moniece. As soon as that show was over, he's back in New York fucking with Cardi B and, 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 and fucking with, I mean, this shit is so fucking whack. And, and, and I just, I mean, come on. Are we really falling for these whack ass storylines? Okay. I mean, this shit, this shit is really whack. Um, please stay tuned. I have, I just created a channel called insightful astrology, which I'm going to be giving you the breakdown on some of these celebrities and uh, what I think. And you'll be surprised on some of the shit that I discovered. But I'm not going to go into that on this show because this is not what this is about. This is basically about reviewing some of these whack ass, made up, not planned well reality shows. Okay. So, um, yeah, Rich Dollars, I mean, like I said, he's he's all around the place. Nothing surprises me anymore. I mean, please. I mean, this guy, and then he has the nerve to have his 16-year-old daughter move in with him. And for what reason or another did they have to announce to the whole entire world that she was no longer a virgin? That's nobody's business. I mean, really, what the fuck they have to put that fucking scene in for? It's like the exploitation of blacks is at such a high degree right now. It's sad to see. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this shit is ridiculous. All these women with these manufactured bodies are playing it off like th that was God given to them. No, it wasn't. Okay, you're sucking all the fucking fat out of your waistline and putting it in your ass and your breast. I mean, come on, let's come on, let's be real. You know what I'm saying? And man, the show, it, the show is just really tacky. And this Mariah Lynn girl, I mean, for goodness sakes with her yeah she got a good you know she could rap and, and she could do her little thing you know she sounds kind of cool but why you gotta sing about that talking about you was a hoe and you know the guy was about to engage you in the video but you you had to reject him to, to let him know that you was a hoe and i mean what the fuck is this promotion about i mean are people not seeing this you know what i'm saying i mean this is gentrification at the highest level and for these people to stoop down so low, you know, that they are willing to go out and say to the whole entire world, guess what? I'm a stripper. I'm a hoe. I'm laying down with whoever just for the mighty dollar. I mean, people are really selling out today and it is at the lowest level ever. Okay. And it, only if you're conscious, only if you're able to see right through this fucking lies of mess, you'll be able to see this is nothing but propaganda, nothing but manipulation. This is how they want society to react. And it's a shame when you see it's all these minorities on the show. And, and every time you turn around, it's all about sex. You know, it's all about deceit. It's all about lies. It's all about manipulation. This is all that I'm seeing from these shows. Okay. Okay. Then people are going to say, okay, what about Remy Ma and Papoos? You know what? I'm going to let a few seasons uh, continue on before I start to give my real diagnosis on what I think about those two. So I'm going to give you a little bit of snippet right now. And hopefully I'll show you later once I get the production and everything together and I can actually show you clips. 
But I remember there was a time when Papu said that he would never do the reality show. And then I read on a blog that he's saying that um, the money that they offered him was something that he couldn't reject. Really? Wow. And I thought he was conscious. You know, I thought he knew about the higher order. I thought he knew about all these things. And now here you are, you know what I'm saying? Talking about how they gave you a deal that you couldn't reject. Really? Wow. So I guess he's no longer conscious or he might be, you know, down with the plan, but slash conscious at the same time. No, you can't No, which side you're confusing people. Okay, and then I understand that, you know, he held Remy down, blah, blah, blah. I mean, great. You know, he did that. They was married. That he that was the best thing ever. But then I read on the blogs that um he was so-called cheating on Remy with his baby moms and his baby mothers coming out, talking about all the lies and everything will come out. That's a shame. But, I mean, he's a man, and I'm not giving men excuses. But I mean, it's kind of, exp it's not really a surprise. You know, I don't know why anybody would be like, oh, terribly surprised because, you know, he may have been with his baby mother or other women while his wife was in jail. It's, it's not really, it's not really a surprise, but you know, the image that he tries to portray is if he's this perfect gentleman, you know what I mean? This perfect person. Hold on for a second. Okay. Yeah, the image that he tries to like give off as if he's this perfect person, you know, like this perfect man that every woman, you know, would dream of having, blah, blah. You, you know what? To be honest with you, before Papoose did this show, I looked at him differently. I really and truly did. And I don't know if people are like, you know, they're afraid to say that, but honestly, it's like for some reason or another, it's like Papoose is coming across to me as weak. And, and, I, and I really hate to say that, but I mean, this is what I see. And this is what a lot of people see. You know, I've sat down and watched the episode with some of my friends. And this is what they seen also. They, they said that they saw that, that he looked like he is weak. And... And to be honest with you, it seems like Remy, she's a little bit more masculine than him. It's like he's the female and she's the male. It's like it looks like, you know, it looks like she's more tougher. Like she's like she's really and truly controlling this man. You know, this is what this is what I see. You know, and even when they were sitting at the table, when she went and met Yan, um, Yandy and Menadisis, I mean, even if you look at both of them and the relationship, you can, I mean, when, when you see Yandy and Menadisis, you can see the roles that's being played. You know, he's the male, she's the female, she's playing her position. But I don't really see that with, um, with Papoose and Yandy. I'm seeing that she's playing more of the masculine role and he's playing more the submissive role. You know what I mean? Like, and it's just, I don't know. I just, to me, that's what I've seen. And I, I've, I've even, you know, communicated with others and, and, and asked them, is this what you see too, before I even decided to do this broadcast? And they agreed the same thing too. They also recently had a video, um, a meeting, which I'll post it on the, on the link on this page where, um, she had like a, uh, they had like a, a sit down with some, some man and he asked her, he said, um, he asked Papoose, he said, you know, well, what do you like? And what is she good at? And then, you know, as a base, as a husband, you know, you say the basic things, you know, I like her cooking. I like the way she keeps the house clean. I like the way she loves all my children. I like, like the way she loves, you know, just basic shit. And then when she interrupted him and she said, so is that all you're going to say? Okay, what about this? And then she said, well, what about the sex? And then he was like, you know, it's like he, when you looked at him, it's like he got caught off, like off guard, like, wow. Like, okay, so, and then he was, and then the guy looked at him and then he was like, yeah, the sex is phenomenal. But why would you be promoting some shit like that? Like, why is you telling 
that's something that's something secret that's something sacred why is you going around like i mean what's the what why do you want people to know that your sex is good you know wh why do you want people to know that and it just i don't know you know i could like i said i could be wrong but i mean even when you look at their instagram pages i know that papos is on her page but it doesn't seem like she has him on there as much as he has her on her page and trust me there is nothing wrong with a man loving on his wife we need to see more men actually like this but i'm just telling you like the the image that i had of papoose was it was more different i i mean i looked at him as if he was somebody who was more stronger and you know just not as submissive and as i don't know he just and then every time you see papoose he's like always turning around staring at her like you know and that's usually what you would see women doing like you know always turning around and glaring in their husband's eyes you know just admiring some, them so much and i don't normally like really see like men do that but again there's probably a lot of men who do and there is nothing nothing wrong with that but like i said i just I just saw a different image. I, I just I just looked at him differently. And it's like each episode, I don't know. I, it just, well, you know, uh, hey, you have your own opinion. This is mine. And you may be seeing something totally different. And it just, I don't know. For some reason, it just appears to me that she's kind of like getting bored with him. You know, or it just it just appears to me that she's probably really not that satisfied and i don't know for some reason or another i'm just getting the feeling that you know she probably would be more interested in somebody who would be like more masculine more tougher you know somebody who's going to grab her like a gorilla style and you know pick her up i can't i can't even imagine papu pick, picking up his wife i i just can't you know, it, I could I could imagine her picking him up, but I just can't. I mean, this is again, this is my opinion. You know, if you don't like it, I'm sorry, too bad. But I'm not here, like I said for my very first video. I'm not here to brown nose anybody. I'm not here to kiss anybody's ass. I, this is just a basic, basic review, okay? And and this is how I feel. Um. So, you know, hopefully as we go along, we'll be able to see more and more shows um, and, and see how things go. As far as Cardi B, I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, please, it, it's one, it's like that person that you're always around and they always, always have jokes or, you know, that person that you're always around and they're so, uh, uh, you know, loud and you're like, oh God, you know, not today. I'm not ready for it. You know what I'm saying? Like when I'm ready to go and see a comedy show, I'll go see it. I don't need your comedic ass around me like 24 hours seven days a week you know and then it has to come to a point where okay fine you want to be a thought you want to be ignorant you want to be ratchet okay fine there's a time and place for that but every day all day you know and then glorifying thoughtness glorifying ignorance glorifying the fact that i mean come on this girl is 23 years old i mean <laughs> come on get your act together basically you know what i'm saying and i know that she's getting her act together by being on the show and earning money but come on be a better role model be a better example you know what i'm saying i just i don't i don't get this i really really don't get this and it's a shame and i hate to put race involved but that's another thing you're gonna hear on this show i will be talking about race you know and it's a shame that when every time they put like people of color or minorities on reality shows i mean you always see this degradation i mean you always see this dumbing down this ratchetness this ghetto fabulousness i, I mean they always put you in that light and then when you see like white people on reality shows you always see class well not every reality show of course not but the majority of them you see classiness you, I mean, you see intelligence or you see a, a, a demeanor of respect. I mean, and, and it's like, I don't know. It, again, this episode was, it wasn't, it wasn't the best. And it really took a lot. I had to actually watch it at least two or three times to get, you know, a good idea of what I seen so I can do this review because it was just hard to watch this time. It really was. 
But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this review. And I wish everybody a happy new year. And I look forward to uh, talking to you again. All right. Have a happy new year.